This is a demonstration on how to fit a PVC T1 A or B board to the Kenwood TS790E. Um, just very quickly I'll show you the, uh, the key functions. I've used the 144 attenuator switch as the on off button for the encoder and I've used the 1200 alt um, button to um, double up as the tone select. So if I switch on we've now defaulted to tone F which is uh, our local area code and by pressing the alt button we can now scroll through the uh, tones. Before we go any further I just want to demonstrate that the uh, 1200 alt button uh, still does its uh, its job um, so by switching on uh, 23 sems now uh, by pressing the alt button it's going to uh, both uh, change the tone and also it's going to uh, perform its original function. So as you can see it's toggling the alt function on and off as well as uh, changing the, uh, the tone. Okay, the next stage now is to remove the covers and uh, get working on uh, fitting the board. Okay, both the top and bottom covers have been removed and I've inverted the radio now so that we're looking at the bottom of the radio at the motherboard and I'll zoom in just to show you where the fitting location I've chosen is for uh, the PVC T1 board. Okay so there we are, we're uh, more or less at the um, front middle of the uh, of the motherboard. I'll zoom back just to uh, show you again. Okay and uh, I'll now uh, take some shots of, uh, of the wiring itself. The first two wires we're going to connect are the orange PTT wire and the yellow Morse tone output wire. The orange PTT wire goes to a connector just above where we've fitted the, uh, the PVC T1 and it goes to where the pink wire is which is uh, pin number one I believe uh, which is the pin that's closest towards the uh, the back of the uh, radio itself. Uh, the other two positions of the connector are uh, taken up by a uh, coaxial lead, with the uh, the centre being the white uh, wire to the uh, to the centre of the connector itself. The yellow wire goes to the audio amplifier, and I'll just zoom back to pan and tilt and show you where this is uh, is actually. Um, located. Okay, the audio amplifier I will zoom in on and that goes to pin number two. I'll take a close-up of that. Okay, that's the uh, audio amplifier uh, with pin number two being closest to the, uh, the front of the radio and uh, I'll just zoom out so that you get uh, an idea of, uh, of the location. Okay. Okay, the next two wires to connect are the black, which is ground, and the green, which is CTCSS tone out. The black is simply taken from the, uh, the board to the land adjacent to the uh, the mounting screw for the motherboard. Okay, I've just scratched a bit of the uh, the land away there to uh, to solder that to. The green wire goes to the wiper of the maximum deviation uh, potentiometer or trimmer, um, which is just here on the right hand side, just there. And if I move the, uh, the wiring loom to one side, we can see that we've just soldered the green wire there to the uh, to the wiper. Okay, the next three wires and final three wires to uh, solder from the board, that is, are the blue, which is the tone select, uh, the pink, which is the auxiliary blue LED, and the red, which is the uh, the power. Okay, what I've done is uh, I've fed those wires back through the existing loom 
underneath the, uh, the two ribbon cables there and then fed them down through to the other side of the radio uh, so that we can get to um, the, uh, the appropriate points on the front panel. In order to be able to do this now we have to remove the screws on the, uh, the front panel at both sides of the radio here and here which I will uh, just now do and turn the radio over so that we can see the, uh, the wires coming through uh, through this loom here to the other side so I can show you the connection points. Okay, I've um, removed the four screws from the front panel and gently uh, lowered the uh, front uh, panel down so that we can see where we are. I'll just zoom into the area of interest which is around the meter assembly and uh, I'll put the camera on the tripod now so that I can uh, give a more detailed uh, appraisal of what we're doing. Okay, just very quickly, uh, this is the red wire that's come from the board and this is the blue wire. I will uh, zoom in a little bit further uh, in a second and this is the, uh, the pink wire which is the LED uh, wire. Okay, this is a close-up of the, uh, the back of the switches now. Right, this switch here is the 144 uh, attenuator switch. As I say, the power goes to, uh, to the right-hand side of it, the left poles being... Oh, sorry, the left pole being there and the, uh, the contacts up and down there and there. Okay, so to the right-hand switch goes the supply. What we do is we cut this uh, track here uh, which is the attenuator function. Uh, so that uh, attenuator function will now be disabled by um, by doing this mod. What we're also going to do on this switch, which is here, okay, which is the 1200 um, alt switch. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this track close to the um, as close to this contact as possible, and also this track here. All right. Now this is not going to disable the 1200 alt function switch. All they've done in this circuit here is that they've doubled up the uh, the two poles and the uh, the contacts either side. So it'll still work obviously using uh, just the one set of uh, contacts. There's no current drawn through it or very little current drawn through it. Um, but um, what we're doing is just isolating the switch. We're now making it a dual function. Okay, so what we do is we connect the tone uh, select to this particular pin here and the pole we've isolated from the rest of the circuitry uh, we put a jumper wire from the pole to ground okay uh, and that way um, we're providing then upon that momentary uh, pressing of the uh, turn alt switch we're providing a, a pulse um, a negative going pulse to the um, to the tone select board okay so just to summarize then it's cut track one, two, three after you've uh, made those two connections. And that's that particular mod. Okay, the final uh, connection then from the board is the pink wire which goes to the LED, the blue LED. As you can see, if I can get my pointer anywhere near it, as you can see, what I've done is I've glued it using hot melt uh, to the uh, the side of the uh, the meter just down here. We can see that there's a perspex window which forms part of the meter uh, front panel, uh, which is slightly exposed, which is ideal uh, for transmission of the uh, the blue light throughout the uh, throughout the meter there. Um, so what we've done is we've um, taken the uh, the pink wire to the cathode of the uh, the diode. Um, here and for the anode connection what we've done is we've put a 1k uh, resistor in series with uh, this red wire coming from the anode and if I just uh, zoom back I'll show you the, uh, the connection point we go to uh, the right of the meter ignore this uh, uh, other uh, modification here I've done to mine this is uh, a white LED that I've uh, put in to replace the bulb but um, I'll just take uh, another shot um, showing where this, uh, this red wire from the anode of the blue LED goes. 
Okay, we're looking at the um, the top. Sorry, I beg your pardon. The bottom uh, right-hand side of the meter itself, just here, and we've got two large lands um, here and here. Uh, the meter takes the right hand. Sorry, not the meter. The blue LED takes the right hand um, land here. Okay, it's very easy to uh, to spot. All right, so uh, we go through the. Um, 1k resistor to uh, to that land and I'll pan back just so that you've got uh, a better better view of it there we are look okay so it's the pink wire coming from the board goes to the cathode of the blue LED and the red goes via resistor to the uh, the right hand land there we go Okay, just a final check and turn select. Yeah, and so on. Okay, hopefully that should be uh, informative enough to allow you to uh, consider operating on yours. Thanks for watching.